Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to Yukt Minds initiative of 10 minutes and newspaper done. Let us save your precious time and make your day productive by finishing the bulky newspaper in few minutes. Today is 18th May and we have selected 8 articles today for discussion. You can download the PDF of today's gist from our Telegram channel or website Daily Current Affairs tab. First news Health Ministry has written to all stakeholders to work towards plugging unnecessary hysterectomies performed by certain medical institutions. This comes after the Supreme Court's direction last month where the states and union territories were instructed to implement health guidelines formulated by the center to monitor unnecessary hysterectomies within 3 months. Hysterectomy is a surgical procedure to remove the uterus. Government of India guidelines In 2022, Health Ministry issued guidelines to prevent unnecessary hysterectomies and asked states to comply with them. States are advised to undertake compulsory audits for all hysterectomies, as is already being done for maternity mortality in all healthcare institutions. The Supreme Court judgment also noted that the guidelines indicate that while in developed countries, hysterectomies are typically conducted among premenopausal women above the age of 45. In India, Community based studies have consistently found rising hysterectomy rates among young women from 28 to 36 years of age. The Supreme Court said the right to health is an intrinsic element of the right to life under article 21 of the constitution and this right has been seriously violated for women who underwent unnecessary hysterectomies. Even now the Indian family planning program is nearly totally dependent on women. even when vasectomy for men is a simpler and a safer procedure in comparison to tubectomy or hysterectomy second news cabinet gives approval for fertilizer subsidy of rupees 1.08 lakh crore for kharif season with fertilizer prices continuing to remain high due to global factors like fall in production high logistics cost especially due to the ukraine situation The center expects this year's fertilizer subsidy to cross 2.25 lakh crore rupees. Out of this, 38,000 crore rupees will subsidize phosphatic and potassium fertilizers, while 70,000 crore, the major chunk, will go towards the urea subsidy. There are basically three fertilizers in India: urea, which is the major chunk, diammonium phosphate, and muriate of potash. center would ensure that the prices of urea and diammonium phosphate would remain unchanged during the season the decision will benefit about 12 crore farmers in india urea is the most produced imported consumed and physically regulated fertilizer of all as you can see the total consumption of urea in the country is about 325 to 350 lakh tons and diammonium phosphate is 100 to 125 lakh tons and 50 to 60 lakh tons of muriate of potash there are several issues in fertilizer subsidies like imbalance in price of fertilizers nutrient imbalance instead of ideal ratio of npk which is 4 is to 2 is to 1 subsidized urea getting diverted and also smuggled to neb- neighboring countries like bangladesh and nepal third news hypertension to be tackled at primary health centers the union health ministry has launched an initiative on 17th may 2023 that is world hypertension day to screen and place 75 million people with hypertension and diabetes by 2025 according to government of india the battle against non communicable diseases must be fought at the primary healthcare level india had developed a platform to fight the menace through the creation of more than 1.5 lakh health and wellness centers and operationalization of telemedicine and digital health services you can use this point in health topic in gs paper 2 Fourth news anti defection law the supreme court in recent delhi government judgment stated that parliamentary democracy implied the government accountable to the people the judgment explains that this entails a triple chain of command first chain civil service officers are accountable to ministers then ministers are accountable to the legislature and finally the legislature is accountable to the electorate via elections the severance of any link of this triple chain would be antithetical to parliamentary democracy which is a basic feature of our constitution 
the supreme court in maharashtra judgment ruled that the 10th schedule makes a differentiation between the legislature party and the political party the legislature party includes all mlas mps belonging to the political party it determined that power to issue directions was with the political party and not the legislature party therefore the person in charge of the political party who may not be the member of legislature like mla or mp would control every vote of the mla mps of that party failure to adhere to such direction by any mla mp would lead to disqualification this judgment further entrenches the power of the party leadership of the legislature it reinforces the idea that the mp mla is not accountable to the electorate who has voted them but only to the party that fielded them in the election in doing so it breaks the triple chain of accountability which is legislature to the people an underlying principle of the delhi judgment the problem lies with the anti defection law as it is based on the assumption that any vote by an mp mla against the party direction is a betrayal of the electoral mandate the 10th schedule of the indian constitution popularly anti defection law was inserted by the 52nd amendment in 1985 to the constitution 10th schedule lays down grounds for disqualification first if an elected member gives up his membership of a political party from which he she was selected if he votes or abstains from voting in the house contrary to any direction issued by his political party or whip if any member who is independently elected joins any party if any nominated member joins any political party after the end of 6 months the decision on disqualification questions on the ground of defection is referred to the speaker or the chairman of the house that is the presiding officer of the house and his her decision is final few exceptions were given in the situation where two thirds of the legislators of a political party decide to merge into another party any person elected as chairman or speaker can resign from his party and rejoin the party if he demands that post earlier the law allowed parties to be split but 91st constitutional amendment act 2003 has changed this originally the act provided that the presiding officer's decision was final and could not be questioned in any court of law but in kihoto holohan case 1992 the supreme court declared this provision as unconstitutional on the ground that it seeks to take away the jurisdiction of the supreme court and the high court judicial review is the basic structure of the constitution fifth news kerala an exemplary story in palliative care the who considers palliative care as an approach to improve the quality of life of patients and families confronting life threatening illnesses such as cancer the 2018 lancet commission on palliative care and pain relief refers to such condition as serious health related suffering that requires physical social spiritual and emotional support alongside medical interventions more than 80% of such individuals come from low and middle income countries India has approximately only 4% coverage for palliative care that to around mega cities. Kerala model started as a community based initiative in Kerala in 1993 Dr M R Rajagopal and his student Dr Suresh Kumar experimented with the pain relief clinic for terminally ill cancer patients at the government medical college Kozhikode. This experiment by them mushroomed over the years into more than 400 community palliative care organization across Kerala driven by volunteers nurses doctors etc As per the 2018 Lancet report Kerala has a network of over 841 of India's 908 palliative care sites one of the largest palliative networks in the world Sixth news key climate threshold likely to be breached in 5 years United Nations The 2015 Paris Agreement saw countries agree to cap global warming at well below 2 degrees Celsius above average levels measured between 1850 and 1900 and 1.5 degrees Celsius if possible. But the global mean temperature in 2022 was already 1.15 degrees Celsius above the 1850-1900 levels. The hottest 8 years ever recorded were all between 2015 and 2022. with 2016 the warmest we know the effects of el nino on that year the wmo said there was a 66% chance that annual global surface temperatures will exceed 1.5 degrees celsius above pre industrial levels for at least one of the years from 2023 to 2027 because of greenhouse gases and el nino which will combine to send temperatures soaring 
the major greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide according to the wmo chief the return to normal level might take even thousand of years because we already have a high concentration of carbon dioxide and we have lost the melting of glaciers and sea level game seventh news iran and russia agreed on may 17 2023 to collaborate on the construction of the final part of a commercial transport network linking to the gulf and india while avoiding western sea lanes it is the only missing link in the international north south transport corridor from northeast russia by azerbaijan to iran southern coastline and on to india by sea the freight network of ship rail and road routes which covers some 7200 kilometers avoids the suez canal between the mediterranean and the red sea international north south transport corridor The legal framework for the INSTC is provided by a trilateral agreement signed by India, Iran and Russia at the Euro-Asian Conference on Transport in 2000. It is a 7200 km multimodal transport corridor that combines road, rail and maritime routes connecting Russia and India via Central Asia and Iran. It links the Indian Ocean to the Caspian Sea via the Persian Gulf onwards into Russia and Northern Europe. It offers the shortest connectivity route between India and Russia. You can have a look at the diagram in which route is going from India to Bandar Abbas port at Persian Gulf to Baku at Caspian Sea then Moscow and St Petersburg in northern Russia. for watching let us know your feedback in the comments keep visiting our website telegram instagram and twitter handles